Hello, I'm Michael Marcott. Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. I am back with our favourite guest, my favourite guest, Michael Moorcock, right here. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing uh, pretty well, thanks, Andy, um, all things considered. Yeah, and we've just had a long conversation off camera, which is all things can considered is the watchword right now, isn't it, mate? You know, well, I'm afraid it is, yeah. Um, it's just actually what, what I decided to do, my, my hands swelled up like balloons and were incredibly painful out of nowhere this happened and uh, so what I decided to do was just cut out all medicate or pretty much all medication except for you know a bit of IP, ibuprofen or that, you know, just regular stuff um, just to see what was causing it and uh, whatever was causing it seems to um, <laughs> of course I can't identify and if I, I'm going to have to bring things back slowly, but yeah. uh, my hands are much better now. But I'm wearing these these sort of silly, silly half gloves now, um, and uh, um, to 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 sort of keep the swelling down. So yeah. it's a bit hard to type, which is a bit um, a bit of an irony, really, all things considered. Given that I used to be known as Machine Gun Marcot. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah, had those compression gloves are not too, they look, they look brilliantly Dickensian, of course, but they, they do. They, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's right. All I, you know, I need, uh, I need an old top hat as well, I think, but uh, I've got I, one somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, if, if you bring it to the next one of these, if you bring the top hat, I'll put the bowler hat on. Bowler, you know? and I thought bowler and brolly. I thought, blimey, you know, yeah, <laughs> have, you gone, yeah. have you gone into banking too? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could be our own kind of a Victorian detective team. You know, Absolutely. Rick, that, yeah. That, yeah. that's yeah. the way forward. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, um, I, I, I'm glad to see that you're very glad to see and hear that you're, you're hanging in there. Uh, and, on, you know, in, in many respects, you, you, you're incredibly productive and busy at this moment in time. You, there's a, a lot of projects on the go. Um, yeah. Uh, we've got quite a few things to talk about, but... What one of those is is the big news out, out of my colleagues and, and your friends at Titan Comics, who are going to be uh, publishing your your epic twelve part Helix series, uh, Moorcock's Multiverse, starting this this August. Now everybody at Titan HQ absolutely went bananas when they realised that we were going to get a chance to do that. Well, I was so pleased about that. I, I must say, I was I, you know I hadn't really expected you to be able to do it or that you might not want to do it, as it were, because because it might have been complicated, all the various people involved. But I'm extremely pleased that uh, that you are doing it because, I mean, Walter's, Walter's artwork alone is, is just, I think, superb. Um, uh, Wheezy, uh, you know, Walter's wife. Yeah, Walter Simonson, the great Walter Simonson. Simonson. I'm, yes, sorry. Um, yeah, the great Walter Simonson, <laughs> the great Walter Simonson's great wife, Wheezy. Yeah. <laughs> um, she thought it was the best, the best work he'd done uh, uh, at that point, and I, I, I think it was too. He really pulled out all the stops, and at the same time, being being the modest guy he is, he was apologising because he couldn't get everything I'd asked for in. But by God, he he put he put an enormous amount into into that, and I and I, I really do think it's. In many ways, the best, the best comic I, I, I've been associated with. In in that, it's a very it's it's probably more personal than anything else I've done. Um, that I work very closely with Walter and with Mark Reeve, who 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 did the um, the seat and beg beg episodes. Um, so so you know, I, I, it's it it does have a, a strong personal. Um, association and and uh, i think it's the only place i've actually written about the multiverse and what what the multiverse is um so you have to go to a, to a, to a lowly comic book um to find out um what 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 my great idea actually actually is all about which i've always preferred anyway you know, i've always liked to as you know, I mean the book. The book has all kinds of references in it, uh, including a bunch of um, crazed um, 
World War II bomber pilots who, who are all uh, existentialist philosophers um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and so on. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I couldn't be more pleased. Um, I'm, I'm just, and, and I'm sure on Titan's record that uh, they're, they're going to be, um, you know, they're going to be the best they can, they can be, you know, as, as, as they have, as the others have been too. Um, I, I got the box set of the Elric as well that um, that that Titan recently Great. put out, and that it's, it's so bloody heavy. It is, um, isn't it? Yeah. I, I took it as a show and tell to the consulate, you know, because I'm trying to get an artist's visa. It's um, it's a special visa for people who need to work, you know, in France in the arts, and. Uh, um, and lugging it about, that was the other thing, we, that was one of the other things we were having to do. Um, it, it, was, it, it, it was, it was, um, I felt like, like um, a, a Christian, you know, in the Pilgrim's Progress with this great burden I was carrying around. It's, I was thinking, you know, why did you do so much bloody work, you bloody fool? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's it's um i mean that's a that's a lovely addition and you know as you know we're we're very massively proud of uh the yeah. way all of the the moorcock library graphic novels and archive collections have, have turned out and this yeah. was that this was i think for us that the, the last great piece of the puzzle and you of course you're right it took quite a bit of work aligning all the like aligning all the bits and pieces and, well, uh, yeah. The fun, the, the odd thing is, it'll probably go over better in England um, than it than it did in America because the Americans weren't used to um, serials, essentially of the yeah. sort you know, all in one 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 comic. And of course, I you know, I, I grew up writing serials for Tiger and Lion, and you know, and various other Fleetway comics yeah. and and so to me it's nothing and to an ordinary English comics reader you know at least of our generation uh, yeah. uh, or rather I'm not trying to make you as old as I am but you know well, what I, I mean I'm almost as old as you yeah yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> well, but but you know I mean it's and uh, and you know that it, I should imagine it's going to be less of a mystery to um to the to the uh, to the English readers and and uh, I, I mean not that not that there aren't a lot of American readers looking forward to it too. I mean, there's quite a good buzz on on the net at the moment in America, but um, I, and I, as you know, I sort of brought all the stories together at the end, so they appear to be very separate, and then gradually they come together to to for the finale by the great Walter Simonson, yeah. um, uh, and uh, and that that there's a sort of final. Well, not a final page, but one of his last pages, a double page spread, where he has Elric and 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 um, uh, the balance and the sword and uh, the the um, spam again, all in the same picture and brilliantly done. I mean, I I I just I just <laughs> I'm just breathless with it, with with admiration. Um, and as you know, we did another one after that. I mean, I, I, I love what working with Walter is. Is he's, he's, a, he's just a great guy to to uh, work yeah, with. I mean, he, he like yourself, he's a supreme talent and a very nice guy at the same time. And and you know, the reality is that is a convergence you don't get all that often. You know, when somebody's at the top of the field and they're also very nice, you know, and a good yeah. bloke. You know, and, and <laughs> well, I they, don't know. Those yeah. people are to be cherished, you know, to me. Well, I was I got a fan letter today from somebody just saying, yeah, they wanted to write to me because they like my stuff. And I yeah. said, I was I was in somewhat in awe of, of William Golding, you know. Um yeah. when and uh um and a bit and I I I confided to another writer, you know, that I'm a I was a little bit shy of you know, approaching him, um, and uh, this writer said, "I was shy of approaching you until <laughs> until you know." Turn up. And Golding turns up. He says, "Bill Golding here," and sort of shakes everybody's hand. You know, and, and this is his wife. You know, and just mucks in with everybody else. And and and, and I was really impressed by that. I know this is silly, but um, but and then people started telling me and Brian all this off. For calling him Bill, for being familiar with him, and that's what he told us to call him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a great anecdote. It's great. It's great when you meet people uh, and they, they don't disappoint. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a lovely feeling, particularly the people yeah. work you admire. It's, it's yeah. the best feeling in the world, I think. And I must admit, pretty much all the writers I met when I was young, and I always remember that when, you know, when meeting meeting readers, um, Mervyn Peake, T.H. White, um, and um, and Tolkien, actually. I mean, C.S. Lewis, they weren't writers I particularly admired, but they were incredibly nice and easy, you know, pleasant people. Um, Tolkien was a bit, you know, a little bit out of it, but... Uh, but I think he'd always been a little bit out of it. I mean, I don't think it was it was a new thing with yeah. it. But but he was still very nice, even if he told me, you know, there was a very good train leaving at four o'clock when he when he you know when when tea was over. I, I think or five o'clock, whenever it was. Um, but he was but he he was very nice. So so you know, I've had nothing but good uh, good um, feelings and 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 you know. Um, good impressions of, 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 of the writers that I admire, or most of them anyway. Yeah. Um, some of them I avoided. I remember one I actually, after I'd met him, I hid behind um, behind a cinema seat so I wouldn't have to see him. Who was um, that, Mike? Um, it was Ray Bradbury. Ah, right, OK. Um, who, who was a bit arrogant and a bit, I mean, he was self-involved, if you yeah. know, know what I mean. And it wasn't, probably wasn't his fault. So, you know, some of us, so I, I went through that, excuse me. I went through that when I was, uh, when I was, a, when I was a, a, a sort of rock star, um, my brief period as a rock star. Um, and uh, for a couple of years, I, I was, um, I don't think I was probably as arrogant as all of that, but I was, I was at my worst when uh, when it when it when my ego was inflamed like a like a large boil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very difficult to. Uh, I have observed. This is happened to me. I've observed though in in the business of talking to people who are substantially famous for me for a long period of time that it's a bit of an occupational hazard that you know when you get the that initial flush of of fame. It's a very difficult thing to deal with. I it, it is. You have to surround yourself. And at the time, I most of my friends had either um, were either not not around or or decided they didn't want to be around. <laughs> um, um, so I didn't really have anybody much to keep my feet on the ground at that point. I was I was um, um, you know I just wasn't. I, I had changed, as people said, and of course I didn't see it, and I didn't think I was any different. But I did notice that uh, when when things got bad for me, I can't remember exactly what it was. It could have been financial because I went through money like, um, well, like a rock star. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, that 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 most of the ones that was were around fell away after after I didn't have anything to offer them, you know, um, either glamorous trips or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so it was uh, it was quite noticeable that 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 uh, that that also happens to you. And it was good for me, I must say, absolutely the best thing could have happened to me. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I mean, so it's a, it's it's good to have those moments of clarity, right? Yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't do it again. Linda wouldn't wouldn't give me two minutes. <laughs> I, I believe that. I, don't, I totally believe that. Um, to to art back to you, we're talking about Simonson. What a genius he is! Which is, of course, we've talked about. You and I have talked about, about Walter a lot in the past because he's a. We've been lucky enough to publish some of his other. Um, yeah, graphic novel work. We republished his adaptation of Alien a while ago, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, uh, that's that's which is a great piece of work in some respects. It's better than the film is, and I lo I like the film. How did the how did the project come about, Mike? Because it was for the it was for DC's then like sci-fi imprint Helix, wasn't it? As I recall. Yes, and uh, it was uh, it was Paul um, um, Paul, Paul Levitz. Levitz. Yeah. Um, who is an incredibly nice guy, um, and uh, you know I, I found really very very easy to work with. Um, he's also the bloke who sent me the CC Beck um, drawing of, yeah. of um, 
as it happens, Gandalf, but I mean, that's that's just one of the things that I was very glad to have the drawing. Um, I'm glad to see that Shazam is coming back um, as as uh, as a proper Captain Marvel character, if only for a short time, too. Yeah, right on, um, right on, well said. <laughs> but um, uh, now I've forgotten what I was saying. Um, poor we were old. We're talking bugger. about how the beginnings of uh, the beginnings of the Moorcock's Multiverse Helix project, how it came about, and you were saying yeah, that uh, and, um, and Paul was Stuart... part of that. Uh, Stuart Moore um, yeah, right was on. was the was the editor, and he was a very very good editor. I mean, I couldn't have had a better team, um, and it was a, you know it was a risk because it was they'd done nothing really quite like it before, and and um, I was expecting them to kill it. All, you know, every everything say, well, I'm really sorry, but we only sold you know six and a half copies um last month so you know so no no can't you know can't carry on with it but they 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 brought it to an end they brought out a you know a, a book version of it and uh I, I found them i found working with with that old dc team um i don't know what it's like now because i haven't worked with dc for a while but um then it was just it was just a joy to work with them i mean i really couldn't couldn't have asked for a better a better oh, uh, yeah that, bunch that of vintage people. dc team they they were hitting a real peak at that period yeah of time, weren't they, they were they, they were, really were yeah yeah they they they, they were they were a great bunch yeah and, they were uh, i've only ever heard good things about uh Stu Moore editing that that imprint mm. Yes, and yeah, you, it was yeah. it was great that you had that confluence of talent that you put together on the book. Oh, it was a it was a perfect moment, you know. I I must say, you know, it could have been a disaster, as you can imagine, you know, if, if I hadn't yeah. quite. And and I hadn't thought of Walter at all. It was it was Stuart who thought of Walter um, for 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 doing the the as it were the uh, you know the main the main story. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Mike. When we get a bit closer to the publication of, of so it's, it it was originally a twelve part series. Um, we're going to publish at Titan. We're going to publish it as two graphic novels, two archives. So, one that does the first six issues and one that does the second six yeah. issues. But when we get a bit nearer that August publication date, uh, I I'd like to do a sequel conversation to this, but one where it's you, me, and Walt having a oh, absolutely, that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that would really be great. Yeah, and we'll, we'll 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 make that happen for sure because we had a few good chats around about the time when we did the with Walt and I about when we did the uh, we did a panel when we re released the the uh, the Alien um, graphic novel. But the great thing about this is is that I think it's an opportunity also to get a great very interesting piece of work out there. You know, so I th I think. I think the multiverse series is, has kind of been underseen over the years, you know, since it. Published. Well, yes, uh, uh, only by uh, Marvel actually. DC, DC didn't seem to take take up the multiverse idea, but Marvel didn't just pinch the multiverse; they pinched the bloody logo as well. I mean, how, how near can you go? And now, 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 uh, whatever they're called, Warhammer. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, bringing out a Stormbringer um, game. I, I think it's a game. Um, and that's really gone a bit too far for me. I'm uh, I'm getting a bit tetchy about about it. Um, oh, now that's very interesting. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because I when we did our last conversation, what somebody like uh, some somebody uh, uh, responded in the in the comments again. You didn't even talk about the game. You didn't even talk about the game. I was like, uh, would, "Would you like us to talk about the game?" I, I, I you know, it had it, that well, it hadn't a... actually crossed my mind. There is a French game um, yeah. out there, you know, and, and they're doing figures and everything else. I mean, they're doing a really nice job. Um, and, uh, you know, there's you know, the, uh, no complaints about it um, so far. I'll probably have a grumble. There'll be something I'll grumble about, I'm sure. But, but, but up to now, they're doing it. And, and of course, Stormbringer has been used um, a, bit, a, bit, uh, a bit confusingly for... Um, for the, the the first was it the first Titan book the first one that uh, Glenar did yeah um, yeah and uh, and so that's not the title of the final volume that that as it were of the of the initial saga yeah um, so it, it's getting extremely confusing actually I I, I think um, this is how it happened how um, the multiverse happened I wrote to 
there was a lady at the time, I can't remember her name, maybe Linda something. Um, she was, she was, she was, I found her very nice and easy to deal with, but people called her the Ice Queen and stuff like that. I don't remember her, her name, but she was there at the time. And they were going to bring out a, um, what's his name? Whoever the, whoever the one that Alan Moore and I can't stand. And I can't, I can never remember his buddy name. Grant Morrison. Um, yeah, Glenn Morrison, right. And um, he, uh, he, uh, he was bringing out a book with, with Stormbringer all over it as the title. And I wrote to her saying, you know, it's a bit off, isn't it? You know, I, I mean, it's ripped off everything else. You have to rip off the title as well. And she was very apologetic. And that's, in fact, that, that's when um, Paul probably... Uh, or Stuart, but, or both of them, I can't really remember, wrote to me and said, you know, how'd you like to do a comic for us? And I said, well, yeah, great, you know, fine. So so it all, it, it works out for the best. Most of these things do work out for the best. They're more irritating than anything because if you've got, um, it's the old story, you know, if you, um, if you want to make money, um, do another edition of Treasure Island. Um, or you know, or open a bookshop next to a bookshop, you know. They're, yeah, they're, that's wow. that, um, or a fish and chip shop next to a fish and chip shop, as they used to be in Notting Hill. Um, <laughs> so if you couldn't get if you couldn't get served in one, you get served in the in the one next door. And it, um, so it's really probably not not not. Um, I shouldn't really be saying this because there's there's uh, there's kind of rumblings going on at the moment over uh, War Warhammer's. Um, current uh, lift lift um right. so um so i'm not sure you know i'm but i should i should be saying you know it's ruined me and i you know i need <laughs> yes. I, the only way i can get back on my feet is 10 million quid you know <laughs> but anyway that's uh, but, but that that's that's how it's going at the moment um anyway yeah um, Thank you. Could we, uh, I, like, like I was saying, we're, we're, we've, we've got more to come on the Multiverse project. Yeah. And we'll have a couple more chats about it as it, as, as it yeah. gets towards the publication, like I said, with, with Walt and everything else. But also, we're on the approach road for the publication of uh, Volume 2 of The Sanctuary of the White Friars. So Volume 2 of, is The Woods of Arcady, right? Yes. And um, uh, it's, we, could, now that's very interesting. We, you were talking again about the... Uh, the, the the editions of the first book when we were when we were talking just before do you want to go yeah. into that for a little bit mate yeah um well tor did did uh, un, they did an unfortunate edition when in in america uh, it was perfectly very very nice edition in england but in america they did this terrible cover and and awful editing i mean it was just just awful and uh i i was very disappointed needless to say and on uh, at their suggestion, um, not at mine, they 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 decided to bring out. And here it is, if I can, if I can get far enough back from the camera. Um, oh yeah, uh, there we go. Is that, is that all right? Yeah. Um, th this is this is the new edition done by Tor. So that's um, the new and, Tor American -ish edition of the Except they're Swan. using the British the British text and the um and the, and and the British the, cover um, design. No, uh, it's their own cover design, but it's 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 as good as the British one, which is a very nice cover design. I, I so they've thought. taken that triangle motif and whatnot. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've done a good job. I'm I'm really I mean I I couldn't be more pleased with um again with you know with the courtesy that they showed you. You um, you you don't always get a lot of courtesy these days, uh, you know, as you go through life. Um, but uh, but certainly, Tor, you know, have done me proud. Um, I can't speak for the Galants because I haven't heard anything about the Galants at all. I haven't heard from any publicity people or um, or from from any editor there. So I'm just assuming it's going to be out when they say it's coming out and eventually I'll get some copies turning up on my doorstep. Yeah, I mean, which, it's due out in the uh, in about a month's time on the 8th of June. Yeah, I'm surprised I haven't had copies yet, but I haven't, so we'll just have to see. C can you talk a bit about the premise of the series, Mike? Well, it's again, it's a multiverse story. Um, it's, it's 
partly a fictitious life of um, moi. Um, and as one person, and I can always tell they're Tolkien fans because Tolkien fans, certain Tolkien fans just hate me. You know, I mean, they just hate me because I said, you know, said something um, not very nice about Tolkien in <laughs> 1922. Um, but uh, what they said was, um, it's, it says, I, 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 all the way through. And I thought, <laughs> and this, I think somebody replied, I don't think it was me, it might have been, but I don't think it was, um, said, it's an autobiography. <laughs> it's, I, it's sort of, you can't do much about that with, with an autobiography. So it's, it's, it continues. It's, it's, um, it's straight autobiography on one level, and then it's an alternative autobiography on another. It says it were another another me and another bit of the multiverse. It's 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 a bit like the comic in that it demonstrates the multiverse in um, in you know in in real terms. It does. It's not just you know saying oh you know so and so is on another plane doing something different or doing what frankly Marvel have done, which is tell the same story over again with a, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> put it put it in a different. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so uh, it it sort of gives you a feel, I hope, a feel for the multiverse. Also, this one is about my my enthusiasms, the things which really got me going as a writer. So there's um, a strong tribute to Edgar Rice Burroughs, you know, a bit of a tribute to Robert E. Howard, and and you know, and, and other writers that that that. Um, that inspired me, if you like, to, to become a writer. Um, although I always wanted to be a writer, so it, they didn't really inspire me, but they certainly kept me going, <laughs> kept me going on the right track. Um, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's not the same. I mean, this one, the middle volume, really goes away from London. There's very little set in London in this one. Um, and it's it's set in a lot of it's set in in a sort of burrows Africa, um, and it's got sort of it's got the three musketeers in it, but it, they're in the desert, um, and uh, you know they they're mucking around in the desert doing desert things, and uh, and there's a bit more to explain how the multiverse works because I. Um, you, you may not or may not know, I don't expect people to know this, but. My multiverse is is sort of combined with Mandelbrot's, um, if you like, universe, yeah. and so I, I I I perceive it as as worlds separated by by um, size and mass rather than you know physically separated in other ways. So um, in this, you've got animals of slightly different sizes and people of different sizes and it's not always pleasant to be in, in an, on another plane because you know you're changing mass you change your or at least the mass is trying to change you really i suppose yeah. more than anything so it's um it's probably a bit more science fictiony than than some of the stuff that that i've done um but it uh, I mean, and of course it, it it all ends ends um i hope with a nice big uh, um finale and um, i'm working on the last volume now and the last volume takes you back to london and and is much more a, a london book the way the way that the whispering swarm was um but i but i couldn't do a book like that without bringing in all my boyhood heroes i mean i think it's i think it's such a wonderful touch it's always interesting to me how much your like career is intersected with uh yeah, Burroughs career, you know. It, it, yeah. it, 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 also, it. Or, or, also, Fleetway. I mean, I've got Dick Turpin yeah. in there, you know. Uh, Robin Hood's in the next one. I mean, and Dick Turpin and various other, um, uh, you know, characters. The cat screaming. What are you doing? Come on in. She she disappeared. I started. I forgot. She loves me singing. I can I can bring her to me just by singing. Moonlight on the Wabash, believe it or not, but that's what she likes best. That's her favourite song. She's got and tremendously come good to that. taste. That's epic. That's <laughs> and, um, I do. I like barbershop, you know, quartet stuff. <laughs> I, do, I, I do. I do all the voices. And uh, <laughs> but if I play my harmonica, 
she immediately jumps up and disappears, gets as far away in the house as she possibly can. And I think she's just coming in now to complain or um, you know, to say why she left. Because I, I, I forgot that she was in the room when I started playing my harmonica earlier on today, which is, of course, the only instrument I can play anymore. So I, um, I, uh, even if I play Moonlight on the Wabash on the harmonica, she doesn't <laughs> like it. I, and I've tried a lot of different keys, I can tell you. <laughs> There's not a single key she likes. <laughs> And I could I could spend the next ten minutes just talking about that, and I'm <laughs> conscious of the fact that I might be underserving the audience for these without mentioning <laughs> a few of the things. Which is one of the things that I love about uh, the Woods of Alchemy is the uh, it's the the spirited return of uh, Captain Bugly Ugly, Bugly Ugly. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I, I like Bugly Otherly too, of course. And um, I, um, it, it, it's my pseudonym on um, on Facebook, Facebook now, yeah. Because well, Facebook don't... threw me off as Jerry Cornelius, so I had to come back as Bug. <laughs> I and I didn't choose it. Linda chose it. I would have chosen a slightly a slightly less um, comical name, as it were. But she decided I was Bugly Otherly, and so so it's. Um, you know, where it was, it was friends of Jerry Cornelius, now it's friends of Bugley. <laughs> 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 and, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very fond of Bugley. And in fact, all of the chaos engineers, all those yeah. guys, you know, they're, they're, um, uh, they're, they're, and they're all, they're all, they're all, they're all back. All right. And, um, and they're back in, uh, in the third one as well. Um, I, I can't really, you know, I can't really get rid of them anymore. <laughs> they're, 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 they're just, buzzing around me all the time uh, mike have you finished wounds of albion are you still working on it no moment? i'm still working on it um i i um I've, I've had a you know i had a few health setbacks um including including um a dash of laziness um, <laughs> well that's the that's the that's the most challenging <laughs> yes, element of all <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> prognosticate anyway i i um um but I also, you know, I had, a, I, had a, I had what we think is COVID. We're still not sure. I tested positive for COVID, but uh, then, then I didn't. Then I did. I mean, it was, it was just one of those things. And I certainly wasn't seriously ill, but I was, and still am rather, um, at least that's what I'm blaming it for. Um, well, it could be the meat pies, but um, <laughs> I, it, 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 and, and you I can't give it, those up. Yeah, that 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 would be ridiculous. You can't get a meat pie worth its salt in America. It's impossible. Very true. They Very don't true. know meat pie, and yeah. we we have to we have to bring in bloody Frey Bentos can mint, mint the worst <laughs> meat pie on the, on the face. And and that's better know, than nothing, you know. though. They're, 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 it know, is Frey better Bentos than canned meat pies do deliver. That's true. But Ripon, I don't know if you know this, but Ripon is the meat pie capital of the world. If you want a good meat pie, and they have dozens of, of you know rival meat pies yeah. in Ripon. Ripon, 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 Ripon. If you go in a, in a supermarket in Ripon, there's a whole meat pie section. It's 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 a wonderful place. It's paradise, is Ripon. Well, um, it, it, a lot it, of people um, don't know that. <laughs> it, this is a very interesting vein that we're about to to uh, to mine now because we're, uh, we're, we're my my sister lives. Uh, so oh. as you know, I'm I'm from Merseyside, and my sister now lives in Standish in Wigan. Yeah, and Wigan is one is one of the epicenters of Lancashire's pie industry, yeah. as well as Uncle Joe's. Meat, uh, Uncle mintballs. Joe's mint balls, yeah, right on. I love <laughs> Uncle Joe's mint balls. <laughs> Me too. And, and uh, one of the great things about uh, uh, about going up and visiting my family is the regular injections of um, Galloway's meat pies that I get in Standish, and you just oh. cannot beat them. They're absolutely wonderful. Well, I'll uh, I'll bear that in mind. In fact, um, if 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 I if I if I realised like Robin Hood when he realised he was dying, you know drew back his blow and said bury me where this arrow shall fall i'll try the same but i'll be either i'll be between equidistant between ripon and wigan yeah um yeah <laughs> uh, i think i think that would be a very nice way to die 
Yeah. Just stuffing myself with pies. Oh, anyway, man. enough of meat that. Pies are um, the meat pies are the best. And it's interesting because, because you've hit the nail on the head. You know, two in American, two. You know, I've got loads of American friends and colleagues, but two in American, you say the word pie, they immediately think you're talking about a cherry pie and apple. You're talking about yeah, something that is absolutely. sweet. You know, absolutely. Whereas, yeah. whereas it's really quite the opposite of you in English. Absolutely. And and also, they 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 claim to make a pork pie over here which tastes so much of some kind of detergent or or um you know <laughs> whatever it is they put in meat to keep it from yeah. actually <laughs> yeah. killing yeah. you yeah um chlorine or whatever you know yeah they're absolutely horrible i mean they are they are an abomination yeah. and and honestly somebody from wigan should come <laughs> Yeah, and and teach him how to make a pie. And somebody, to be fair, from Melton Mowbray, maybe, um, yeah, uh, should come uh, with with the pork pies. Um, I'm not. Uh, I haven't. I haven't really. Ex uh, Fortnums make a good a good pork pie, um, and so do um, Marks and Spencers used uh, to make a very Ma good Ma Marks and Spencers. Are, Marks pie. and Spencers uh, uh, do do a great. Uh, I do a great range of pies actually. And there's one of the guys who who won MasterChef relatively recently, uh, like in the UK, you know, sort of like uh, you know, cooking competition show. He was one of the winning chefs. He I saw him on his Instagram saying that one of his kind of great like stealth treats for himself is Marks and Spencer's creamy chicken pie for one, eaten cold with a pint of Guinness. And uh, we're seeing that seeing that mini video on Instagram completely derailed my day, and in fact my entire week because I became <laughs> just fucking obsessed with trying to find a, a creamy chicken well, pie for one uh, from Marks and Spencer to have with a um, pint of Guinness. The the best the best um, Marks and Spencer's pie selection that I've ever found is in there. They've got a deli counter in Oxford Street. I don't, they don't have many yeah. deli counters, no. but this is one they've got in Oxford Street. And that is a really good, a really good pork pie, I have to say. Um, and Fortnum's aren't that bad. I mean, Fortnum's are mostly just a brand these days, but, yeah. but, uh, but, but if you, if you go down into the basement and search hard enough, you'll find a pretty decent <laughs> Well, I, 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 uh, as as we as we're nearing the end, but not quite getting to the end of uh, Moorcock and Sumner's pie roundup, <laughs> I think there's, there's, I'll, I'll close out this particular section on two other things, which is there's a great company called Bowen Pies who deliver pies nationally, you know, up the oh. up, up from like, and I imagine that it might be a bridge too far getting their pies well, over to the states. I don't you can't know. do it. Yeah. They um they seized my last consignment of of tin tin fray bentos pies, oh, which no. they didn't need to, yeah. but they, you know they said well it's a meat product and they stopped them. They don't stop them all the time, yeah. but every so often some over officious um, <laughs> customs guy sees sees meat on the on the thing and yeah. uh, but not that there's any meat in a fray bentos pie <laughs> anyway. <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> and there may, may be a tiny bit of kidney and you know, a slice of kidney <laughs> and a slice of beef and that's about it but um but so it's it's not that easy you can't even bring them in um you you would you you would have them confiscated if you tried to bring them in you know on your own yeah um which i've actually have never tried to do because I couldn't bear the idea of having my pie taken away. Oh, oh no, that's that, there's there's nothing worse. Yeah, no, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Mind worse. you, I did bring a I did bring in a um, a baguette ham sandwich, which is one of my other favourites um, from France. Once I managed to I managed to get that all the way through. Oh, brilliant! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. And, and, and so far, no, no, I haven't had anybody knocking on the door, but you never know. <laughs> Was it still edible by the time you got it home? Yes, because I I, I, you know, I made sure it was you know it was well wrapped and uh, uh, yeah very good. and and was was okay. Also, French ham, hot, in a baguette, is actually the a, the supreme union of our two great cultures. I, I I know this from French people that I've made them for, and you get a nice bit of French ham just out of the, you know a good bit of French ham out of the supermarket. You 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 cook that instead of bacon, 
and uh, you 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 butter a baguette. Um, and if you you know, and you, you put can put HP sauce on it, but I'm I'm not I'm a purist really, and HP sauce came after my my time. So, but but French people like it. Um, I'm a big best... HP. I'm a brown sauce lover myself. Um, so. Well, yes, I like it too. I have a I put a I put a drop of brown sauce in the Frey Bentos pie actually, which me uh, too, which me too. Yeah, that, yeah. So, well, well, that, that's, that that is the Northwest Rugby Club. I ate my first pies at my dad's rugby club in Ormskirk, and that's exactly how they get eaten. Whether you really? want to have HP sauce in it or not, yeah. you're fucking yeah. getting it. So yeah. at a very yeah. early age, you, you know, at the age of five, you have to get used to those rich flavors. Well, it's if you have one. anything, to, if you have anything to do with my obituary, just remember I'm the man who brought, who introduced the HP sauce bacon sandwich um, to to France. I added that to the French cuisine, <laughs> and, uh, and I, they love it. I, I am I, I love that, and I'm making sure that piece of information will live down <laughs> through good, the ages. Good. Good. It's, 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 it's the one thing I want to be remembered for. <laughs> oh, Mike, uh, I mean, if you ever. If you ever manage to make it back to London, um, my brother recently took me to a place uh, in Mayfair. It's called the Windmill. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been. It's been there for a long time. But man, it sounds they, familiar. They, it's a gastro pub. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and and um, and it's like it's been there for, for, for generations, I think. But they do great cooked on the premises, a range of about eight different meat pies. And they're, they're absolutely really? phenomenal. Yeah, so you know, if you ever get it anywhere within the vicinity, if I have to swim the channel, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> because because of bloody Brexit, I can't get a meat pie in France anymore. Yeah. I can't get a you know, Marks oh, and it's Spencer's. the gift that keeps on giving Brexit. I, 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 yeah, I, I could I I can't get a, a pork pie anymore in France. Um, there used to be a place that um, that used to import them, and now it's not worth it for them to import them. It all. It's too much paperwork and it costs too much. Marks and Spencers are all closing down, so you can't get them there either. Um, it's 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 an unhappy life for a man of over eighty, I can tell you. <laughs> it's, it is it is an absolute pie apocalypse at the moment. That's for sure. It is. It uh, is. And uh, I, I do I do feel your pain. I do feel your pain, and and you know, having been back home quite a lot of late, uh, I uh, it's sort of completely reignited. Uh, my sort of pie addiction slash compulsion. So I'm, I'm I'm supremely pleased that we've managed to devote at least twenty minutes of this interview yes, to this subject. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, it's there's brilliant. a place to bring it back to original uh, the original conversation. There's a place in the multiverse where the meat pie is hailed as the greatest greatest uh, culinary treasure of all time and that pirates will 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 rob ships when they hear that they they're carrying the meat pie consignment from uh, from liverpool to uh, to to the caribbean right on oh, i love it I, and i i i i completely uh love the fact that you've uh, built my hometown into that equation that's that's great <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike, before we close out, I, I could really, you know, I could really talk for another half an hour about this topic. And I'm sure that we will off camera. We will. Um, we will. Yeah, uh, uh, have, we, have you been pleased by the response to uh, Citadel of Forgotten Myths? Because, uh, you know, I, I that was very warmly um, received by the people that I know. Who fans yes, it, 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 there were there were a few few people on Facebook, you know, that said it was rubbish. <laughs> well, um, yeah. But there always are. Ever since you know, after the first, the first few Elrics, there have been people who've said it's 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 it's. And I, I mean, I think to myself, if if you're the kind of person who just wants the same old bloody thing served over and over again, and of course a meat pie would be all right in that respect. But other than meat pies, um, then then you know that's that's what you get. But I'm not going to give the public the same old thing over and over again. I mean, it's 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 like you know, it's it's insulting in my view to 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 do that. I mean, I know lots of writers do it, and lots of writers have been very successful doing it. But I just don't think it's fair. I I think I think you know you've got to try and introduce some new riffs. Um, you know, it's like bloody Eric. What's his name? Um, um, Eric, uh, 
Clapton playing that same bloody riff over and over and yeah, over yeah, again. Well. I mean, could you do that on stage? I couldn't. I mean, I'd, I'd feel, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it if, if everybody said, let's have it as it were as an encore or something, but I wouldn't be doing it as a main thing all, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not just getting at Eric Clapton. I mean, I, but there are lots of people do it. Um, I just, and I, and also, um, I can't, I don't want to do sort of imitations of myself. Yeah, you know, I I, 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 what I try to do is set the barrier, or not barrier, but the 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 goal, as high as I can in a, in a, in a, if, if if you like a slightly different direction. I have to, otherwise I'm insulting myself and and the reader, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm I'm glad that most people, you know, most people have liked it, because um, I started off the book with they're they're fairly straightforward. Um, if you like, self homages <laughs> to um, to the earlier Elric, because I, I, you know I know a lot of readers did want that, and so I thought I'd try and do what I could, but I couldn't just do that. I had to put other stuff in, and uh, and and the last half of the book is 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 a is a totally different sort of riff, yeah. um, and and you know. And if I do another Elric, and I'm I'm actually writing a, li- a very short Elric at the moment for some uh, for a sword and sorcery magazine, um, it's only you know very short, a vignette more than anything. Yeah. But even that has to be something different, <coughs> um, you know, because I know that I would get bored. And you know, after the after the tenth Tarzan novel, you were beginning to think. Haven't I read that somewhere before? You know, and I love Edgar Rice Burroughs. I mean, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a great, um, I'm, I'm, I'm on, you know, half the, uh, half the Burroughs websites. I enjoy, you know, talking about Burroughs and all that. But, um, and also, I couldn't, I couldn't finish Carson of Venus, the Carson of Venus series, because they were too much like the um, John Carters, and course, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't finish the last John Carters because they were too much like the first John Carters. But I mean, the first three of everything he wrote were brilliant. You know, they, yeah. um, it's like he wrote little trilogies, and, and they were all very good. As he was like, he was fired up with them. But after that, it feels like you just, um, you well. Um, you know that you you you, <laughs> that you 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 just you just don't care. You're just sort of turning it out, you know. Uh, uh, um, and I and I just can't I can't do it. I mean, if I was being if I was losing money on it, if I was you know if I if I was being paid um, millions of quid not you know to 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 write another one just like the one before, I could not do it um, because it would bore me. And I've I've always reckoned that if you if you start boring the reader, uh, or rather if you start boring yourself, then you're bound to be boring the reader on some level at any rate. Um, so I, you know I I just don't I just uh, so I am glad anyway to cut to round that to bring it round back to your point. But I, um, I think it's very well said because why would you want to do what you just referenced? Is what is what so many rock acts do is become their own tribute act. You know, yeah. I, exactly I, you know doing the same it's like acting in a soap opera you know for over over a 30 year period or, or whatever just doing that stuff again and again and again where's the stretch in that where's the adventure in you within the confines i, of I agree life? and and you know and where is the 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 um the respect for the audience uh, and it's you know, the, the great actors vary their i'm not saying i'm a great actor <laughs> but but great actors vary their performances Probably every night, enough to enough to you know just give it an extra it little fillet. Yeah, make it interesting for the other actors as well as for the for the audience. Um, anyway, that's just the way. I, I, that that's partly why I get sort of irritated by people who rip me off so much. I mean, I I I, I suppose it's understandable. I can see why people see it. So you know, it's 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 a sort of. Um, you know, it's it's nice for people to do it or whatever. I don't know, but but I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. it it's not it's not in me to 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 do that. Um, and if I if I catch myself doing it, or I, well, I actually ask people, you know, that's the worst thing. I'm 
um, I'm, or that I, I worry about, that I'm repeating myself, that I'm giving them the mixture as before and all the rest of it. And, and with the multiverse, the good thing is you can expand it and expand it pretty much until, uh, until you cough it. <laughs> so, you know. And the thing is, Mike, you continue to do such interesting things with it. I mean, you really hit the nail on the head about, yeah, you, you've really underpinned these vast, you know, global uh, uh, entertainment conglomerates with, you know, the, the, the core of your concept. But what you've done with it compared to what they've done with it, it's just it's there's a gaping chasm in between those two well, approaches. Yeah. Um, to, to, and I, I must say, comics are always um, ripped off the the main popular culture. They always have. I mean, yeah. I had to write a series called The Man from Tiger for Tiger when The Man from Uncle was doing well. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm not uh, I haven't been above it myself. Um, so I, but. But at the same time, I, you know, I wasn't, um, it wasn't something I put in my, uh, in my itinerary or whatever it is, not itinerary, my um, CV, you know, wrote the man for Tiger. Um, <laughs> for, for, I think it was for, well, it was obviously for Tiger comic. That's, that's, that's why we did it. Um, and and, and the, the Fleetway comics, like most comics, were borrowings from, from more, you know, from successful popular, popular film, TV series and so on. Um, and and I shouldn't really complain about it, I suppose. But I I do get you know I do I, I just think why you know why I think I was naive when I started. You know I thought that's what you had to do that you had to do something different. Um, I, and and I, it didn't occur to me that you know I could or should or would carry on just writing the you know the mixture as before. Um, anyway, I'm not. This is this is beginning to sound a bit boastful, so I'm not going to go on with that. Um, um, Heaven for offend. That's that. That's not your material, mate. And uh, <laughs> I appreciate. I appreciate your candor. I think it's a very good place to wind up. Um, and uh, thanks for going into so much detail, not just about the pies, but about your process, which I think is is always very interesting to fans of your work. And I think it's all that's all very interesting stuff to listen to. Well, can I just finish this? Um, just uh, um, you know, writer Michael Swanwick, who's a very good yeah. uh, fancy writer, um, he wrote to me. He does a he does a series for the New York Review of Science Fiction, um, and he asks he asks authors one question, just one, and and then they they have to answer. And so he asked me, you know, how I came up with the idea of the Eternal Champion and and the multiverse. And I answered it. I'd never really had to put it down on paper that way before. Um, and, uh, and he liked it, which I'm very glad about. And uh, um, so I, I, I'm thinking of reprinting it somewhere, you know, because it, it at least gives, gives readers a clue as to what, you know, what I'm up to, even if they don't give a crap what I'm up to, I mean, which they shouldn't, you know. I mean, they should just sit down and enjoy the book for what it is. I mean, I'm not asking people to... Uh, to give it a a, a John Clute like uh, appraisal, as it were, but um, but I, you know, but I, but so, some some readers are curious about how you come to you know come to do things. So so I'll, I'll print that somewhere. Maybe maybe we can we can fit it into um, to uh, a, a Titan book sometime. Yeah, I, that would be, I, I'm sure would be up for that. And uh, yeah, I, and I, I'll I'll go back and speak to the guys about it because yeah, I, see I think, what, see, yeah, I will do for sure. Because um, I could put it in the second volume of the multiverse. If I don't know what you know, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know really what what yeah. what how it's going. But but uh, yeah, I could do something like that. Although yeah. I've of course done it at great length in the um, in the introduction to the multiverse comic. Uh, they made me cut it, by the way. Um, it probably was a bit long-winded. Um, uh, I had, I think, it's about half its length from what from what I did originally for DC. Um, <laughs> so I went on and on about Mandelbrot and uh, you know and uh, the many worlds theories and so on and so forth. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I won't. Um, that that is my uh, probably my little bet to our is that people think that. I'm claiming to have invented the many worlds theory, which in fact, um, in fiction, I think H.G. Wells was the first person to, 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 to do that. 
And um, what, what I did with, with the multiverse was try to explain what a multiverse might be, how it might exist, just as Wells tried to work out how a time time machine might work, even though there were plenty of time travel stories before that. But um, what he did was actually describe time as a fourth dimension and how it could be traveled through. So, so really, that's that's what what uh, I in my um, in my great uh, uh, egotism um, have uh, have decided um, the multiverse is all about. No, nobody, you know, they're all saying, you know, well, you know, so and so did that. Murray Leinster did that, and and you know, some good stories. I love, I love um, alternate world stories, but they're alternate world stories. They're not multiverse stories. They're not. Then they don't show, you know or try to explain how a multiverse might actually work. Um, they're, they're, more, they're still more like fairy stories where somebody visits fairyland um, rather than um, science fiction story where, where, you know, where, they, where they make their way through the multiverse. Poor buggers. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think that's the, that is a very strong point to go out on. I think that's very Okay, concerned. yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that that's great actually mike and uh, th all right thanks for sharing that because i think uh, i think the people who tune into these conversations will be very interested in all of that well i hope so you know and, and i think the people who tune in are probably going to be interested because the people who don't tune in think i'm crap anyway <laughs> <laughs> on that highly self-effacing note this of course has been the one and only michael moorcock and uh, we've been talking about many things Originally, we were talking about Moorcox Multiverse coming soon from Titan Comics and uh, The Citadel of Forgotten Myths out now from Glance, just about to be published in paperback by Glance in the UK. And uh, and of course, the, the Woods of Arcady, which is, uh, which is uh, I believe, is publishing at the beginning of June. I uh, think it is, yes, from what I, from what I understand, yeah. Um, I still haven't seen copies, so I don't know. They may, for all I know, they've decided to dump it and uh, so, not tell me. So people have glanced, if you're watching this, get Mike's <laughs> copies. Come on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Get it done. And, get uh, it done. and the, main, the most important thing we've got out of this conversation, of course, is the importance of the British meat pie, which uh, we must never forget. Never One, forget. One thousand percent, which we must eternally celebrate. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. One of, one of the great well, linchpins of the. Multiverse. Why don't we have a meat pie day? There isn't a meat pie day, is there? I, you know, there what, might I, be a, I'm going to research a, that, and yeah. the next Let time we know. get together, I'm going to know the answer. And, right, okay. and, uh, yeah, yeah, Just don't sure. eat one in front of me because that would be cruel. <laughs> the ultimate crime. <laughs> yes. The ultimate. Crime. I can't believe they confiscated your Frey Bentos. Yes, I, they did. I also can't believe that that's that's a, a sentence. That I've ended up ended up saying to you, <laughs> I never would have anticipated that at, at the beginning at the, at the beginning of this call. Yeah, but 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 I love it. You know, I mean, the, the thing is, if you're if you're a meat pie lover, you know, anybody who's a meat pie lover will one thousand percent understand what we are talking. Absolutely, about. absolutely. And, the and there must be fervor. others oh, in, yeah. in this country. I mean, in America. I mean. Um, so near and not so far. Oh, we are trying to try and get over in um, in May um, it, to France in May. And if we get the right visa, which we we'd have to get um, to be able to do it, we're going to get to England as well. So um, well, well, I'll let you know as soon that, as. Well, that, that's that. Then we'll be dining on pies for lunch, mate. If, if absolutely, you manage to do that. absolutely. But if you only get to France, let me know and I'll pop over and see you. Okay, right. Well, don't forget, you know what to pack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the message is clear. I, I feel certain that I can get Frey Bentos across on the Eurostar. That's not you can you, you can get you can get pork pies uh, easily um, on Eurostar. Um, a bloke who came to interview me, he said, "What what what can I bring you?" This is the New States a, a couple of years ago, um, and I said, "I said just bring me some 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 decent pork pies," and the and the man did he knew he knew exactly he how delivered to get to my... yeah. yeah he delivered and i'll love him forever <laughs> for that <laughs> that is that is fantastic mike it, as always it's just wonderful seeing you mate 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's always cheering to see you, Andy. And you take care of yourself, mate, and I'll look forward yeah. to seeing you soon. Okay, great, Andy. Thank you. All the very best, Mike. Take care. You too. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's us done, mate. Brilliant. That's great. Yeah. So, uh, oh, thanks for staying on for a bit longer. That was the, the bike and pie conversation is great. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to include all of that. I, 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 I'm not, I'm, no, you I'm, should. I mean, we, we need to spread the word. I mean, because this is right. an outrage. It is yeah. an absolute outrage. Yeah, no, um, I mean, you can't, you know, fucking hell, no, no decent pies in America. I know, I've made the mistake of ordering a meat pie every now and again in the States, and I've had very similar experiences to what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, they, don't, they haven't even heard of Desperate Dan. That's yeah, how I ignorant mean, yeah. they are over here. Yeah. I mean, they talk about the falling off of, of American, American education, <laughs> and they haven't heard of Desperate Dan. <laughs> yeah. oh. I mean, come on. It's just not good enough. I, 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 no, I remember, I, I think it's a similar thing to before they'd made uh, Snickers bars universal. Yeah. And do you yeah. remember that well, we Hershey's in the UK, every... Hershey's bought everybody yeah. out, but we in the UK had marathon bars while they had yeah. Snickers bars. Right. I remember the raging disappointment when I first visited the States. And I was so excited. I think it was about 1980. And I was about 16. I was so excited to see. Um, like a Snickers bar, which was, oh, this is the American version of America. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and uh, I, I took a bite and it was a raging oh, no. disappointment. They're awful. I mean, people say British chocolate is the worst in Europe. You know, apparently British chocolate couldn't get called chocolate in Europe. But and and uh, but in America, they think British chocolate is the, you know, is the greatest thing, well, <laughs> since, since apple pie, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I mean, they, they really they really go on and on about Cadbury's when it's Hershey's who own Cadbury's. I mean, the yeah. Cadbury's stuff over here is just crap. It's yeah. I mean, it's not great in England, but it's certainly not 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 uh, not what it should be. But uh, no, I'll, uh, we must we must have I must I must do a I must do a book or a comic about just about meat pies so that we can uh, so we can talk about meat pies ad lib forever. <laughs> Ad nauseam, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm all in, mate. I'm all in. Right, okay. That'd be brilliant. That'd be fantastic. We can get HP sauce. Yes. It's a good thing. Yeah, well, that is good. That is good. Yes, it is. And Branston Pickle. HP. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, there we go. There we go. Cheese sandwiches is a whole other topic. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I love the steer on the uh, on the uh, French baguettes and uh, hot, um, the, the hot ham. That sounds amazing. Well, me and Jamie Oliver, you know, we're probably the best known names in, in France. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Me. All right, mate. It's, it's great yeah. to see you, Mike. Take care yeah. of yourself. Yeah, you too. You too. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.